What's up, Internet? Robert Teagarden back again today with another edition in my How to Edit for Beginner tutorial series. Today, we're going to be talking about how to edit dialogue. We all have these things where we do an interview, we have to bring offboard audio back into post, synchronize everything up together, and then make it seem as though these people are just naturally talking without any pops, blips, glitches, any of that type of stuff. We cover all the cuts up with B-roll, we present it to the world as some beautiful interview footage, and it's as if, as a viewer, I'm watching just a very natural conversation that that person on camera is having with someone. Maybe it's me, maybe it's the other side of the camera, I don't really know. The tips and tricks that I'm gonna be using today are universal. I'm gonna be working, however, in Adobe Premiere, uh, but you can follow along at home, and even if you're working on Final Cut Vegas, all that different stuff, you can use these same tips and tricks to be able to uh, make your edits and your dialogue the best they possibly can be. With that being said, let's roll the intro, and we'll hop on into Premiere. <music> going to just pop on into Premiere. I've already set up a sequence that we can use uh, in order to kind of illustrate exactly my process where this is concerned. Uh, my footage isn't graded at all, it's just straight from camera and I've matched up my audio from the on-camera audio that's there and the off-board audio that I had. That really I just used a Zoom H1N recorder um, and I had some Sennheiser lav mics that I put on this guy as well. Uh, did a miking technique that's fairly simple and we'll go into that now, that's another video that I'll do. Um, but if you haven't seen how I set up my sequences and my timelines and the way in which I do things, go back and take a look at this playlist that I've got up here somewhere, wherever the thing is. That was, um, that was the dog. For this step, what I've done, presumably what you'll have to do is you'll take your interview footage itself and throw it on a timeline of your choosing. You're gonna pull in your dialogue down on the bottom, your offboard dialogue itself. And if you are using a, si a situation like this where you have separate audio and video, um, you're gonna have to synchronize that footage together. Most of the time I use a program called Pluralize that comes from Red Giant. Um, I didn't use that here because this one's pretty simple, um, but you would use that if you're using Pluralize you already know what this is all about and I don't have to tell you that. Um, however, if not, you can use, try to use the synchronization function within Premiere. Uh, you would just highlight both of those clips itself, the video and the audio. You'd right click and go up to synchronize. It's gonna ask you which track you would like to synchronize it to. And typically I would use the video track itself which then moves the audio around to match the video. That's what I did here. Most of the time, I would say 99% of the time, it gets that spot on. We don't have to worry about anything at that point. I mean, it just kind of works seamlessly. Sometimes I have to fine tune things and move them around. If that's the case, then what I would do is I would just select my audio layer. I'd click Alt and use the arrow keys to move things around uh, in order for them to sync up. Now, the way that I would do that is actually something that's really valuable for us to be discussing here. Um, I usually tend to make my audio regions fairly large. And the way I do that is I hit Alt and the plus and minus on the keyboard, and that's universal for both your Mac and your PCs. I'm working on a PC right now, but the, I'll highlight all the quick keys down on the bottom as I, I usually do. So my waveforms actually become the biggest guide in everything I do where dialogue and audio for that matter is. Um, these waveforms are just graphic representations of what's going on in terms of the, the peaks and valleys of the audio that you're using itself. And this becomes really valuable for me when I'm going to edit dialogue because most of the time these big valleys right here are things that aren't of interest to me at all as an editor. Most of the time it's either dead space where we're just waiting for something to happen or it's a question that the the operator or the director of that scene is asking the talent 
So that's really what I'm looking at first, is I'm trying to find out what these peaks and valleys look like. I don't really pay too much attention to the offboard audio here on the camera, because that's picking up a ton of other ambient noise and things that I don't necessarily want to pay attention to. So I look at my dialogue track and I see where the gaps in this process are. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm really just going to start to cut my way around all of those things and just give me kind of a rough space using Command K or Control K. And then I'll also use either Q, which will eliminate everything before where my cursor is, or I'll go to the next space, I'll hit Command K again, and then from here I can hit W and that'll delete everything after where my cursor is. And so the first step that I usually take is that I go through and just delete all of the dead space that I know I'm not gonna really need anything within that particular edit. And this gives me basically uh, the space and just talking sections that I know that I'm going to need, okay? Another way for me to do this is I can highlight everything and hit alt delete or alt backspace on my keyboard and that'll ripple delete everything together. We did a kind of a similar technique in my timelines video there, um, but I'm gonna go through and make sure that all of my sections have all these dead spaces deleted in between them. And then once that's done, I move on to the next phase. Now I'm not gonna talk about story building too much where this is concerned, um, really because that's not the focus of what this video is. Now, story is obviously an incredibly important aspect of what we do as editors, but for this really all I wanna focus on is how to get the cleanest dialogue I possibly can, the cleanest audio that I possibly can. Um, and in order to do that, there are really two main tricks that I'm going to be using, three main tricks that I'm going to be using to get the best audio that we can. So if I let this play through, we'll probably hear a little click or pop in between these two clips right here. So let's let it play. A G37 IPL. Sure. I'm here today at Fast Intentions to get my catback exhaust installed with 12 inch resonators. Um, I first heard about fa so there's no real big pops that are there specifically, but I could get myself into a situation where I know that he kind of says an um, or he does something that I don't really like so much. And so what I need to do is kind of smooth out that dialogue clip. Resonator. So let's see, 12 inch resonators is where I wanna go. And I don't want this space here. And so now- Resonators. Oh, I first heard resonators. Oh, I first- That's too quick of a section. I need to kind of spread those things out a little bit. And so the way I'll do is I'll click A on my keyboard and that's gonna give me this track all selections forward tool, right? And so everything after what I'm touching, I can move over. But all I wanna do is just highlight everything. I use Alt and my arrow and I'll give it about two or three frames, come back in, select everything and then drag it backwards. Resonators, oh, I first heard it. Resonators, oh, I first. So now I get a decent space in between what I want here. I'm actually gonna add one more frame. So I get decent spacing that seems somewhat natural. Oh, I first. Resonators, oh, I first. And, but now what you actually hear is kind of this like <gasps> breath that he's taking. Resonators, oh, I first. Resonators, oh, I first. And that's something that's a dead tell. It's very obvious that there was an edit point there. So the way that I'm gonna go back and fix this, traditionally what I'll do is one of two things. I'll either use, when I get close to my regions, you see that little red space that's going on, it'll actually let me edit and pull these things back and forth. I don't wanna move them, but if I right click on my mouse, I see apply default transition. And so this is gonna apply a crossfade in between those two regions. Let's listen back to see what that sounds like now. Nators, oh, I it's actually pretty clean. Usually what I have to do is go in and shorten this a bit, which I think I'm going to. Resonators, oh, I first. So oftentimes what happens, what Crossfade is doing is it's taking audio from one section and bleeding it into audio from the next. So if they're too close in terms of the way that they're talking, you're gonna hear audio on either side that's unwanted. So what I do is I try to make this Crossfade as small as possible to get away with the cut that I want, um, but to not have any audio bleeding through. So usually I only give it a couple frames. Resonators, oh, I first heard resonators. That's a little too short. I'm gonna give it one more frame. 12 inch resonators. Oh, my first. So now what we have, I'm gonna delete this real fast just for the reference point. 12 inch resonators. Oh, my you have that little breath in there. And now with our crossfade. 12 inch resonators. Oh, my first heard about. We have no breath. So that's fantastic, okay? So that's my first tip is that I'm using these cuts, these crossfades to hide the fact that there's a, a breath or a click or a blip or someone going 
you know, and when they smack their lips, it's the worst people smacking their lips and you can see it in the edits themselves. So another thing that I'll do often is let's say that there's a clip and it's a, where the dialogue is starting. I've actually stopped the dialogue for a second for, you know, music, B-roll, whatever it might be. And so now I have a place where the audio is going to come in the dialogue, excuse me, is going to come in, but oftentimes there'll be a hard start to that dialogue. Yeah, the reason for me, yeah, the, yeah. the. Re so that's a little too abrupt in terms of the context of what we want. So oftentimes what I'll do is I'll back up the dialogue a little bit like you see here. I'm gonna give a keyframe, I'm gonna hit control and click on my audio region there and it puts a keyframe here. I'm gonna go back to the beginning. I'm gonna put another keyframe there. And really you're gonna see these keyframes are one, two, three, four, five frames apart. And even that might actually be a little too long. And I grab my first keyframe and I just nosedive it to the ground. And what I do with my second keyframe is that I go and right click on it and I put Bezier and we're gonna make this a little bit bigger. And you can see that there's this little Bezier handle right here at that little blue dot right there with the string attached to it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just nosedive that all the way down. And so I get a very aggressive curve that's going up. And what I've done, this line right here is the, the decibel level, the volume or gain that's available to us for that audio region. So putting these keyframes there and putting a hard Bezier curve on it is really eliminating the volume from that first little part of our Bezier curve. And so it's allowing a more natural attack of that audio uh, for our dialogue. Yeah, the reason for me switching. Right? Yeah, the reason for. So now I don't have this aggressive hard in of my audio. I have a nice smooth transition. And when there's music and other sound effects that are on top of that, it's something that's not noticeable at all. The last bit that I wanted to discuss is the use of J and L cuts. Now I've done a whole video on what a J and an L cut is, um, and that's really from the visual standpoint is how that video is kind of represented. But the other aspect that I want to talk about from a dialogue standpoint is the use of J and L cuts in terms of how your dialogue comes in and out of a cut and a B roll, uh, a piece of B roll being placed on top of that. For that, I'm going to go into the actual edit that I did here because it's a little bit easier for me to display how that happened. So if you look, I'm going to make my audio a little bit bigger and my, my visuals a little bit bigger as well. And just for good measure, I'll make this kind of go up. This is uh, not really consequential. It's just the music that I chose. Now, what you notice here is that the cut for the video actually takes place a few frames before the cut for the audio. And sometimes that ends up happening where it makes sense for me to push my dialogue over a few frames or have my cut come in a few frames before. And it's almost imperceivable when you're watching it through. What you see is the person on camera and then literally a millisecond before the cut happens, you hear the audio coming in for the other uh, sequence or the other part of the edit um, or vice versa. You hear the audio coming in a second afterwards because you want to see and sit on that person's reaction. And so I wanted to sit on that person's reaction just a little bit longer. We'll see exactly what I'm talking about here. The me 37. The me see, it's almost imperceivable, but I get him to kind of give me that head nod, which is important to the edit. It's a little bit affirming. 37. The main and so I just kind of nudge the dialogue over slightly. Um, in this case, this would be an L cut of the dialogue where the video stops before the audio goes again, right? That's just an L cut right here. And so those are the three techniques that I'll use from a very beginning standpoint for my dialogue. I'll always crossfade every one of my cuts so there's no hard blips, bleeps, <gasps> breaths, or any of those types of things. Um, if I have anything that's coming in that a crossfade is too long, then I'll use that keyframe technique while I have an aggressive Bezier curve. And then the other thing is I'll use a J and an L cut to kind of push my audio around so that it makes sense from a fluidity standpoint. Really the goal here is that I can have as fluid of a dialogue dialogue as possible so that my cuts, my edits, my story that I put together is imperceivable to the viewer. It just seems like a natural conversation for them. Now, the thing here is where we don't see a lot of stuff on YouTube, we see jump cuts all the time, especially for our fans of Philly D, just cuts out all of the breaths in, in between things, period. Um, but that's where the, the kind of benefit of B-roll comes in. It enhances the story, but it also covers our dialogue edits. And so it makes it seem as though we're just having a natural conversation, but the B-roll is also covering up those dialogue edits all the time. I'm gonna do another video on, on 
why we shoot B-roll, not how to shoot B-roll, but why we shoot B-roll shortly. Um, but this is hopefully a shorter one for you guys. Uh, with that being said, you know all the different stuff. We're not gonna go over the liking, sharing, subscribing. If you found this valuable, please tell other people we're trying to grow this channel. Thank you so much for tuning in, you guys. Stay tuned, check out the playlist for all the other videos that I have in this series on how to edit for beginner for 2020 style. And this is Tea Garden. We're saying out. I'll see you guys in the next one. I play the role. I'm a people pleaser. Who I am got lost in the speaker tweet. Teeter totter tween neo so prima donna. Basic bitch feeder fodder. See and saw it like it's all past lives. I done lived and loved a hundred thousand conscious. It's all connected. We all some monsters. Snarl fangs out like we mapped the chomp, y'all.